Welcome to our channel. Before we dive into today's prophetic message, we want to extend our heartfelt thanks to all our subscribers, new subscribers and members. Your support means the world to us and we are praying for you daily. Also, don't forget to check out our store where our designer adds new monthly collections. We've also added two more stores for you to explore. Let us know what you want to see in our designs. With this being said, let's go to the topic for today. The heart of the New Covenant is unbroken fellowship with God. However, a common disillusionment in the Church is that believing in Jesus means we truly know Him. It is tragic to think we are connected to others only to realize we know them only in part. Jesus gave His all so we might know Him as all. James 2.19 TPT says, You can believe all you want that there is one true God. That's wonderful. But even the demons know this and tremble with fear before him, yet they are unchanged. They remain demons. Belief alone doesn't bring change. The key is repentance. When Jesus emerged from the desert, his first message was repentance. Why? Because only through repentance can we truly receive him. Matthew 4, 17 Amp tells us, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance means turning and yielding to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse and wash us so we can be restored to unbroken fellowship with God. I am moved whenever I read the account of the fall in Genesis. The thought of being separated from God's presence is terrifying. Consider how the Holy Spirit feels, knowing that Jesus paid the price for our salvation by dying and rising again releasing us from the deed of sin, yet we often live as though the debt was not paid. We selfishly remain unchanged, the faith of a child. Why are children favored and blessed in the kingdom of heaven? Why does the Lord say we must have the faith of a child? Because children receive well, are dependent and needy, and change quickly. John 1.12, AMPC states, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right, to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. The Parable of the Ten Virgins In Matthew 25, we read about the ten virgins. Five were foolish because they did not bring extra oil for their lamps. They assumed their oil would be enough and that their unpreparedness would somehow be forgiven. But when the bridegroom cometh, the door was shut to the unwise. Matthew 25 verses 8 to 13 says, But the foolish virgins said to the wise, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, otherwise there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came from the wedding ceremony, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut and locked. Later the others came and said, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he replied, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, I do not know you. Therefore be on the alert, for you do not know the day nor the hour. The church at large often believes its knowledge of the Lord is sufficient. However, many live off old traditions, a spirit of religion and customs that have nothing to do with the God of all creation. They can't grow spiritually because they are fed with milk. We must procure our spiritual growth from 30 folds to 60 folds and from 60 to 100 folds, which is the stature of Christ to be present at the wedding ceremony in heaven. Most Christians jump this biblical event. If you think twice, you will realize there is a nuptial ceremony before the banquet. Jesus is the bread of life. The more time we spend dining with him, the more oil we receive. A common deception is that enough faith will prevent suffering. However, true transformation comes through the fellowship of his suffering. As you can see, oil and trials have tremendous value. Many have misunderstood this season of reconsecration as an unnecessary trial, though it is one of great value and mercy. We must prepare ourselves in fasting, prayer, communion, reading the Bible, putting the Lord first in our lives, and considering the Holy Spirit as a person here on earth with a ministry as our teacher, companion, and refuge. We must be wise in the way we reach God. 
The church is in a prelude to the parable of the ten virgins. Those who were unwise are being made wise, but not to lose the wedding, instead to be ready for the wedding. As New Testament priests through Christ, we must keep the lamps burning continually. The golden lampstand in the tent of meeting in the holy place provided light for the entire tent. Leviticus 24 verses 1 to 4 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel to bring you clear oil from beaten olives, for the light to make a lamp burn continually. Outside the veil of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron shall always keep the lamps burning before the Lord from evening until morning. It shall be a permanent statute throughout your generations. He shall keep the lamps burning on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. The extra oil vessels symbolize our need for the Holy Spirit to fill and refill us continually. Money cannot buy this oil. It is purchased with the reward of pressing, suffering and intimacy with the Holy Spirit, abiding in Him. This season, the Lord has bought us time to abide in Him. John 15 verses 1 to 5 reminds us, I am the true vine. My Father is the vine dresser. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he prunes so that it will bear more fruit. What fruits is he talking about? Of course, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, because he lives in us through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the connection to God. Our relationship must be with the Holy Spirit to obtain the oil and the fruits. He said to the apostles, you are already clean because of the word I have given you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Abiding and remaining in him is a personal choice. Consecration is a choice. Letting the Holy Spirit cleanse and sanctify us is a choice because we must allow the work to be done in us. Bearing good fruit requires abiding in him. When he spoke these words, the Holy Spirit wasn't permanently on this earth like now. Many believers do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It is so important to know the person of the Holy Spirit because after Pentecost, we can only abide in him with the help of the Holy Spirit. He said, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14 verses 26 to 27. Your daily decisions have never mattered more, as the weight of eternity hinges on them. It is a narrow road to the door, and few find it, but there is still time. Do not despise this pruning, but yield to the Spirit, as the Lord desires to prepare you for your most glorious and shining hour. Thank you for joining us today. We pray this message has blessed you. Don't forget to visit our store and tell us what you want to see in our designs. God bless you.